Our armor is primarily worn by the genetically enhanced superhumans of the Imperium, the Space Marines, and since the days of the Horus Heresy, the vast legions of Chaos Space Marines. In some cases, custom suits have also been created for the mere mortals of the Inquisition. The Sisters of Battle also utilize a variant of the fabled armor, however it does not contain all of the same functions found in the variants worn by the Space Marines. Power Armor is an incredibly durable, fully enclosed combat suit. The immense level of protection it offers the wearer is provided by its adamantium and plate steel construction encased in a ceramite layer. The Power Armor, coupled with their genetically enhanced bodies, allows the Space Marines of the Adeptus Astartes to simply shrug off enemy firepower that would otherwise kill most regular guardsmen. The suit contains a plethora of advanced technology which provides additional benefits to the wearer. This technology includes an integrated combat enhancement system nestled within the helmet, commonly known as autosensors. An array of tactical targeting systems which add targeting reticules and rangefinders to the interface display make up the autosensors. This has proven to increase the precision and accuracy of the bolt rounds fired by the Space Marine weapons. The armor houses life support systems to allow operations to be carried out in the various hostile environments often encountered by the Space Marines. The life support systems continuously monitor the Astartes' biological functions, feeding the collected medical information to the wearer and, if necessary, to the chapter's apothecaries when injury is sustained in battle. It can also administer painkillers and anti-venoms into the body when the situation calls for it. The Space Marine's body temperature is automatically maintained by regulation systems, and a nutrient storage system allows the warrior to continue fighting for extended periods without the need for further nourishment. Although the power armor offers a high level of protection, it is relatively heavy. To prevent reductions in mobility of the Astartes, it is linked with electro-impulse fiber bundles designed to biomechanically amplify and replicate the wearer's actions and further enhance their strength. The black carapace gene seed organ implanted within the Space Marines allows them to be neurally linked with the suit of armor through the various plug-in transfusion ports found in their bodies. This turns the suit into an exoskeletal canopy that moves with all the speed and precision of the Battle Brothers' own body. The black carapace is one of the most distinctive features of a Space Marine and without it, the power armor would be almost useless. A microfusion generator core is contained within the backpack unit to power all these integrated systems in addition to the movement stabilizer propulsion systems, which can provide directional thrust through the vent system on the backpack. This keeps the warrior planted to the ground when on low gravity planets. When in combat on board space vessels, Magnetic coupling devices in the boots can be activated to provide added traction to the surface of the ground. There are several patterns of power armor which have been adapted and improved throughout the history of the Imperium, many of which contain common components. Core features of the armor such as the autosensors, photo lenses, respirators and various armor sections, although differ in appearance between design patterns, still retain the same overall function, albeit with minor improvements between variants. The evolution of the armor's development has been influenced by the available technology, access to materials, and the need for more additional advanced features throughout the history of the Imperium. Many of the older patterns are extremely rare and are considered valuable heirlooms, preserving the glorious history of the Space Marines. The appearance of the suits is often tailored for each individual chapter, displaying various colours and adorned with inscriptions and chapter insignias, proudly displayed on the pauldrons, knee plates and other locations around the armour. The very first design of power armour is the Mark I Thunder Power Armour. Its name originates from the thunderbolt and lightning symbol known as the Raptor Imperialis, which the Emperor used before he later adopted the double-headed eagle symbol, known as the Imperial Aquila. The Mark I armor was designed solely for use on the planet of Terror, 
and so did not contain many of the life-supporting functionality which is to be found in its later incarnations. It was used by both the Space Marines and their techno-barbarian enemies before the time of the Great Crusade during the Emperor's campaign to retake and reunite the Sol system. Only the upper portions of this armour was powered, which generally resulted in the wearers being somewhat restricted in their movement speed. However, the upper body power the armour provided greatly enhanced their strength and close combat effectiveness. After the main planets of the Sol system had been reunited, the Mechanicum factories on Mars began to work on a new and far more advanced type of power armour for the Emperor's newborn Space Marines, the Mark II power armour. It was used during the Emperor's Great Crusade, hence the name Crusade Armour, and was the first suit designed for use in the vacuum of space. Added life-supporting functionality housed within the backpack allowed the Astartes to fight on other worlds in deep space with potentially hostile atmospheres or environments. The structure of the armour was modified through the use of ceramite microscopic armoured rings linked together. Although this had the benefit to allow for increased mobility, it had the drawback of making repairs increasingly difficult. The first iteration of Autosense features was found in the Mark II pattern of armour, and as well as other improvements, became the standard equipment in every subsequent pattern of Imperial power armour. Mark III power armour was developed for environments where cover is lacking, such as spacecraft boarding actions and subterranean tunnel complexes, allowing the Space Marines to wade into battle and shrug off enemy firepower during their frontal assaults. Due to the heavier protection offered, it was given the name Iron Armour. The Mark III was only developed as a specialised heavy suit, which was deployed in specific situations. It was not a direct replacement for the Mark II pattern. Due to its relatively heavy weight, the armour was not suitable for stealth operations, but did provide an inspiring presence for their fellow troops as the Astartes advanced upon the enemy. During the days of the Imperium's greatest glory and strength, as the Great Crusade reached its pinnacle, a new variant of armour was designed by the Mechanicum on Mars, intended as a replacement to the ageing Mark II design. The new design was called Maximus Power Armour. Many secrets from the Dark Age of Technology were recovered on newly conquered worlds during the Great Crusade, which were incorporated into the Mark IV suit. This new technology allowed for a more efficient design, reducing the suit's weight whilst also improving the level of protection. The separate linked armour plates of the previous designs were abandoned in favour of a larger armour casing, which incorporated flexible joints. The design was far easier to maintain and improved overall mobility due to its lighter weight. Other improvements were made to the active power systems embedded within the armour. The power cables were minimised in number, reinforced and rooted outside the armour, making the torso section less bulky. The power core located in the backpack was redesigned into a more compact and efficient unit, reducing weight and saving space for other systems. Alterations were made to the helmet. It was no longer fixed to the armour's neck plates, allowing it to move freely with the wearer's head while still maintaining the atmospheric seal. Mark IV power armour was envisioned to be the ultimate and final stage of Space Marine armour development at this time, able to offer the best protection in any conditions faced by the Astartes. This led to many legions of Space Marines being re-equipped with it by the start of the Horus Heresy in the early 31st millennium. Many traitor legions of Chaos Space Marines are found wearing the Mark IV armour due to this reason as they wear the power armour that was current to the era when they first turned against the Emperor. When portions of their armour become damaged, Chaos Space Marines often scavenge more modern pieces from the bodies of Loyalist Space Marines they have killed in battle to upgrade their own armour. Mark V Power Armour, referred to as Heresy Power Armour, was manufactured during a time of crisis when the Horus Heresy broke out. As the war raged on, resupplying the troops with the advanced high-quality Mark IV armour became increasingly difficult, and so the Mark V pattern was constructed from basic materials and techniques, allowing for easy production and maintenance. 
This pattern is easily recognisable by its molecular bonding studs used to hold the armour layers of ceramite and plate steel together. This armour was in no means an upgrade over the Maximus pattern, but it fulfilled the required needs during this dark time for the Imperium. In many cases, older, heavier power cabling was used as this was far easier to obtain and could be produced in greater quantities. Many of the older advanced features of the Mark IV pattern had to be stripped back into a more primitive design. Unlike previous versions of armour, many examples of this pattern were not treasured and preserved, as they represented the dark days of civil war and memories of betrayal. The Mark VI suit of power armour was intended as a direct replacement to the Mark IV Maximus pattern. The design was formulated with ease of construction and repair in mind, however, unlike the Mark V design, it retained and even improved upon the advanced features of the Mark IV. It was constructed with a more modular approach, allowing damaged parts or sections to be easily replaced without compromising the level of protection. It also included new failsafe features, such as duplicate power cabling. The Mark VI was renowned for the smooth fit between its moving sections and light weight, making it perfect for highly mobile assault marines on the front line. Its key design characteristics include the studding on the left shoulder pad, which was a common part of the armour to be replaced after sustaining damage from enemy fire, and a sloping beak-shaped muzzle on the helmet, part of the reason why the Space Marines are referred to as beakies by the Orcs. The first deployment of the Mark VI armour was during the Scaland campaign against the remnants of the broken Eldari forces. A thousand suits of prototype Mark VI power armour was gifted to the Raven Guard, who performed well on the verdant Eldari seed worlds of the Scaland sector. They took advantage of the agility and advanced features of the new armour, launching hit-and-run attacks that made short work of the enemy. After their success, the armour was refined further with design improvements suggested by the Raven Guard and approved for full-scale deployment. It was then named the Corvus Pattern, in honour of the Raven Guard Primarch, Corvus Corax. The Mark VII variant of power armour represents the final major revision of the Mark VI pattern and was developed during the later stages of the Horus Heresy and remained one of the most common forms of power armour for more than 10,000 years after. During the fall of Mars to the Traitor Legions, Mechanicum armour development teams were evacuated to Terra to continue their work. As Mars finally fell to Horus, the Loyalist Space Marines on Terra and Luna were equipped with the new Mark VII armour. The design features of the Mark VII armour are characterised by the Vox Link integrated into the suit's helmet, coupled with a Vox booster and scrambler attachment intended to block enemy attempts to intercept Imperial communication channels. The Imperial Aquila decorates the front of the chest plate, which has led to it being given the name Aquila Power Armour. Many of the other design features are common between the Mark VII and Mark VI patterns, allowing damaged parts to easily be interchanged or replaced. Most of the advancements in the Mark VII armour are to be found within the helmet itself. More Autosense features have been added to include sonic protection, visual magnification, infrared scanning and night vision. A wide array of diagnostic information is continuously gathered from various sensors positioned around the armour which relay vital information to the display within the helmet. It can be transmitted through the inbuilt Voxlink device to other squad members if necessary. Mark VIII Errant Pattern Power Armour is the first variant produced by the Imperium since the days of the Horus Heresy. This illustrates the extreme stagnation of technological advancements within the Imperium since Horus' defeat at the hands of the Emperor. This technology stagnation is further emphasised by the limited improvements made to this suit. The vulnerabilities of the Mark VII have been addressed by raising the front collar guard to better protect the neck joint, and additional plating has been added to the exposed power cables on the torso. The modifications made to the errant pattern were not readily compatible with previous versions, and so the armour has only been produced in limited numbers mainly bestowed upon officers and commanders as a sign of rank. With the introduction of the Primaris Space Marines, 
and the new Mark X suit, it is unlikely that the Mark VIII will now be widely deployed across the chapters of the Space Marines. The Mark X power armor is forged on Mars and represents the latest development of power armor design within the Imperium of Man. It has been specifically crafted for the long-awaited new breed of transhuman warriors, the Primaris Space Marines. The Mark X suit is the most advanced to date, combining all of the most effective elements of ancestral power armor technology, in addition to the new systems and adaptations into a well-balanced, highly durable shell. It draws most of its technology from the fabled Mark IV Maximus and Mark VIII errant patterns and possesses modular and versatile characteristics. Mark X armor differs from the previous iterations of power armor. It is designed to attach to a special undersuit worn by each Primaris Marine, enabling it to be fitted in different configurations according to specific battlefield needs. The most common configuration is the Mark X Tacticus armor. It is used by intercessor squads, Hellblasters and Primaris commanders. It is well balanced, offering substantial protection and great mobility. Mark X Gravis Armor is a reinforced version of the Tacticus Armor, favoring durability and defense over mobility. It is characterized by a thick layer of ceramite over the chest plate, along with raised, thicker shoulder plates. It is commonly used by aggressor squads, allowing them to relentlessly advance upon the enemy positions while spewing out hails of bolter rounds or lashes of flames. Some Primaris captains have been known to utilize Gravis armor when the combat situation calls for an immense level of protection. A modified suit of Gravis armor is utilized by Inceptor squads. The backpack is replaced with an integrated jump pack, allowing them to launch mobile assaults, bringing mobile firepower to bear. The core composition of the armor is the same, but with a few minor design changes, such as an additional blast visor and external jump harness. Another configuration is the Mark X Phobos armor. The suit's lighter weight ceramite and streamlined design focus on greater agility. Its grav thrusters allow for precision battlefield deployment, and its servo motors are engineered to be completely silent for stealth operations. Phobos armor is commonly worn by vanguard units, such as infiltrators and eliminators. Mark X Omnis power armor is a blend of the durable Gravis configuration and lighter Phobos version. It is utilized by suppressor squads and is fitted with a built-in jump pack, similar to the Gravis variant used by Inceptors. The result is a comparatively lightweight but extremely durable suit of power armor that can easily tolerate the extreme stresses of grav drops, jump insertion operations, and the thunderous recoil of portable heavy weaponry. Power Armor has demonstrated extreme ruggedness, durability, and adaptability over the millennia. Many of the armor patterns are still utilized in different ratios by Space Marine chapters at present. Some seek to equip their Astartes with the most advanced patterns of armor available to them whilst others cherish the older patterns and choose to maintain them for as long as possible in a combat-ready state. The ancient Mark I, II and III patterns are no longer in use and are extremely rare relics of any chapter lucky enough to still possess a complete suit, although it's more likely to see these older patterns among the Chaos Space Marines of the Traitor Legions. In most cases, only sections of the more ancient patterns of armor still exist. They exist as treasured relics of the chapter and are often gifted to the Astartes who have earned the right to wear it.